Arnav, welcome to Dua Lab. Thank you, thank you, Barun. So when I read through your biography, um, there are four or five turning points that I felt uh, quite important for you. The first one would be your Oxford scholarship for social anthropology course in St. Anthony. The second one was your, according to me, was your joining NDTV when you first started appearing in front of camera. And then Times Now, where you started donning a different hat. Um, I mean, we talk about it, how you raised funds, moved out from the typical editorial role and also had contributed and led the fundraising initiative. Then 2611, which made Times Now an uh, undisputed leader in those days. And finally, when you struck out for yourself and have launched Republic. So these five seem to be our, our, some of the biggest turning points of your life. So let's go through one by one. Uh, where did that answer come from, which you gave to Ranjit Bhatia in your, in your scholarship interview? <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. So I, he, he asked you that, I, why, I why would he give you the yeah. scholarship? No. Uh, well, you know, I had got through business school. I had got through the Delhi School of Economics. I had got a first class. You had a direct entry after getting a first class at that time. And so I had uh, given up on the idea of getting a scholarship to the UK, though I had got admission to Oxford. And I was among the very few who in their third year got admission to a postgraduate course at Oxford. I was good in my subject. But, you know, that, that letter from Oxford was more about feeling good about my achievement rather than the possibility of going to Oxford. Because my father was in the army, leave alone, go and study in Oxford. We couldn't afford even a flight up and down from the UK. So by the end of the interview, it was more about going through the process. I remember it was... I think Habitat Center or IIC. And I was asked by, I don't know who it was, but Rajin I think Bhatia. Mr. Bhatia, he said, son, we have many people who are with postgraduate degrees, better courses, better experience, better grades than you. Why should we give you the scholarship? And I told him, Mr. Bhatia, because I'm not from St. Stephen's. And uh, I don't think they got it. The interview was over. I remember going to the washroom. And uh, Mr. Bhatia suddenly stood behind me as I looked in the mirror. And he said, you shouldn't take it that way. And he was, he spoke with a very uh, soft tone. So you couldn't figure out what he was saying. I said, it's okay, sir. And then we went away. And when the results of the scholarship came, my name was number one on the list. And so I think, uh, I think it was because at some point, Barun, I, I started giving a damn about whether I would get through anywhere or not that I got through. So was and it so an angst it. that needed a vent? I mean, that's a very unusual, that's a very spontaneous, that's very honor. That's not angst, this reality. The fact of the matter is many of us don't state the reality. The reality was that you had a far lesser chance if you were from Hindu college than you had from St. Stephen's. So that is the elite versus common battle that no, you have been fighting. It's, it's uh, entitlement versus merit. Was there similar angst during your days in NDTV? Were you part of the elite group uh, in terms of uh, uh, the lead anchors? Did you get um, any kind of a differential treatment in the organization compared to in those days, possibly Barkha and Rajdeep, their more prominent faces on the, on the channel? I wouldn't say so. I think too much has been said about it that I held some angst and I wouldn't say so. I spent nine plus good years at NDTV. I wouldn't say that I did very badly. I learned a lot. I was hand handling multiple functions. I was on the desk. I was doing guest coordination. I got to anchor my show. I was reporting on interesting beats. And you know something, Barun, if you ask anybody, did you get the best chances in your first job? Then 90% of people would tell you, no, 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 99%. I didn't. Somebody else walked away with it. So why should I stand out and say, oh, you know, I didn't. I think I was happy. I think it was the start of my career. I was unhappy with the overall journalistic atmosphere. I did not feel it was intellectually challenging enough. I felt people did not ask appropriate questions. I feel people did not do their research. I felt that the brightest weren't always quote unquote making it. But I don't think that would, should be give me any reason to angst. I also felt that maybe I had those thoughts about whether I was writing enough or whether I was doing any justice to my own education. But those are thoughts that every youngster has. I enjoyed myself. I got great opportunities. I got the first sort of uh, airport tarmac interview of Sonia Gandhi. I, um, I traveled all over. I, I covered coalition era politics. Uh, I'd covered the left. I got to interview Jyoti Basu. So I had a one hell of a time. But, but yes, but yes, let me say this to you. I was unwilling to just do a job. And that was the difference between me and the others. Mm -hmm. I did not 
just want to do the job. I felt I was capable of doing more. And I had pretty much decided by 2001, 2002, when I came back from Cambridge after my fellowship, that if I have to stay in the media, I have to do something uh, more challenging. So I put it in a different way in media industry uh, or any anywhere else, anywhere, not only media industry. I don't think a better peer is liked always. So a better peer would not be liked by most. Very well said, very well said. But 2000 to 2001, I was a visiting fellow at the University of Cambridge. And in the months that I was away, back to my academic world, spending time in the library, spending time with myself and analyzing things from a distance, I began to think of the possibilities in the world of media ahead. And I looked ahead to the next 10 years. And I thought to myself how wonderful it would be if I could have a dash at entrepreneurship of any kind. And then, you know, I have this maze in front of me. I start thinking, what if I got the same opportunities as someone else who maybe built an organization? Would I build a better organization? Would I be you want make to it start more from agile? The yes, I wanted to. I Not be part of a legacy which already existed. Correct. And, and I remember that I did tell Pranoy when I left that when he did ask me, why do you want to leave? Uh, I did tell him that because uh, I want to start a second source of employment for English television journalists in this country. Excellent. So I had a very rational reason to want to go. A, a, all kinds of irrational uh, analyses are made of it. The honor was angry, bitter. He was, he was not doing as well or allowed to do as well as others. But that was not the thing. It was simply, I would say, this middle class urge in me that I can do better, I can compete better. You're better than... I, you're not, you're that better I, than not that I'm better, but maybe I can work harder. Uh, how, maybe maybe right. I can or work maybe, harder maybe or, or apply than, myself better. Maybe That's you're all. better than the way you are perceived. Perception, I don't... I've never let perception challenge. Or evaluate me. it. I feel that nobody, no individual, no you, no me, Barun, none of us should allow someone else to evaluate us. But, but in corporate world, you get evaluated every year, right? Yeah, but no, so that's why I said that I just felt... What if I get a level playing field? That's right. So, so that's another way of saying the same thing. Absolutely. Yes. And then when you landed up in Times Now, you told me that uh, the Times Now channel was launched almost with virtually very minuscule investment from the uh, from, from the company, and you you took charge and you wanted to break, and you went out and got Reuters in. I did not land up in Times Now. There was no Times Now. I oh, right. founded and created and made Times Now. There was nothing. There was no funding for Times Now. I have been part of the team that has traveled to New York and London and has actually raised investment with fantastic people like Chris Ahern of Reuters, president of Reuters, Geert Lenabank, at that point of time, the editor-in-chief of Reuters globally, uh, Tom Glosser, who was the managing director of Reuters, Thompson. I have been part of all the meetings which have raised considerable investment, private equity investment at a decent valuation. I have traveled around, I have learned Absolutely. I have taken notes and I've seen how these meetings happen. And at the end of it, I do believe that it was my conviction and my passion for news that made Reuters, among other variables, invest into Times Now. And that was the seed capital for the formation. Absolutely. So from the seed capital to the building, to the construction, to the design, to the production, to everything. Let me tell you, anchoring my show was the last thing on my mind. It took me one and a half years of labor, sweat and many, many professional challenges to build the first independent alternative at that time to NDTV, which we launched on the 31st of uh, January 2006. So what I want to tell you is that from the time that I left, uh, from my last reporting assignment outside the Congress office in May 2004 during the general elections to the launch of Times Now on 31st of January 2006, the one year and seven months is a transformative period in the life of any journalist and nobody Nobody has been through the effort and the learning that me and my team went through at that time. We did a lot of programming. We did a lot of stuff, which maybe I needn't have done. We were a mixed up bag. The organization, the Times of India guys wanted me to do a bit of business. The Reuters guys wanted me to do business. We were doing business in the day, afternoon, news at night. So we were a mixed bunch. We were like TNT, Cartoon Network, you know, <laughs> cartoons in the morning, movies, <laughs> old movies in the day. So we were a confused identity. But, but, but. Well, I mean, okay, that's fine. It's no problem. So that was a problem, right? Uh, you know, okay. It's a mixed bag. You know, you know I, cre I created Times Now. I, I put all my effort along with my team in creating Times Now. And then uh, there were a lot of people who wanted to take ownership of a new brand in a big group. And everybody came and gave their two bits. And eventually you ended up becoming a little bit of a 
you know a kitchri of everything and um, should i have listened should i not have listened i don't know but i think i developed understood what news was all about with episodes like prince when we started doing running coverage of events and when we realized that you cannot cover all the news but you can cover a few news stories which make and a gigantic own difference and no, own up those not just own but which which make a difference to the people so we started doing things which made a difference to the people we started doing things which made people think we covered monkey gate uh, series in australia which which polarized the audience made people think made people take a stand we took a different stance towards terrorism we provided live coverage of a scale that was not seen before we put multiple cameras on location we changed the promo strategy behind all, the news we did a lot of we did a lot of i would say uh, i i always said this and I, i'll tell you this i remember there was an editorial meeting when we were all people saying we're defeated and i said there's there's a elephant there's a horse and there's a deer now people won't like it i said the elephant is ndtv is is there it's got so many ob vans it's, it had at that time huge infrastructure is the elephant but it moves slowly i said the horse is cnn and ibn with apologies to everyone there because it just got off to an early start they got the clearances before us so they launched a few days before us so it's got off to an early start but you see the horse moves in a straight line that the elephant moves slowly i said we'll be the deer oh brilliant. we'll we'll pirouette our way around and change our directions so we change the stories in the news agenda every day we stopped doing features we stopped doing sports we stopped doing programming we took harsh decisions we evolved very quickly within one year we were number one so i think that times now under my leadership was the fastest brand now problem is varun by that time people had expectation they said oh if you're not number one on day one which means you've lost and and you know varun please put yourself in my shoes you are you are you are the you you're a guy who's launched a channel for the first time the whole world is standing out there to say that you don't know the news yes i didn't don't know the news but we tried very very hard dialogue with varun das featuring arnab goswami streaming on the world's first news ott news 9 plus download now